we started off as a company focusing on testing for curtain wall systems, uh, which is the air water tightness tests. Uh, and over the years, we have uh, expanded our foray into fire compliance and fire testing. We've been doing fire testing for a decade now, 10 years. Uh, we started off with a 3 meter by 3 meter furnace uh, for doing fire resistance testing for doors, partition walls, glass systems. And now we've expanded many fold. Uh, we do a lot of fire testing now for various materials to be used in the construction industry, uh, but focusing primarily on passive fire protection. Uh, so fire resistance uh, is one aspect. Uh, we also do a lot of testing for fire propagation in cladding systems, curtain wall systems, uh, a lot of material tests for uh, interior finishing materials, carpets, flooring, false ceiling, etc. Here uh, is a setup where uh, we conduct and offer mock-up testing for cladding systems. And typically, the cladding design needs to be validated for bringing together different materials that could be compliant to their respective norms. So the norms relating to combustibility, ignitability, flame spread of respective materials could be good. Uh, but when they are brought together to form a system, the resultant behavior can be potentially catastrophic, uh, as we have seen some of the big fires around the world. So we have two mock-up tests here in our facility. The NFPA 285, which is an American test method to mock up a uh, cladding system and uh, bring together the whole buildup of a cladding system, right from the base to insulation materials, cladding panels, as well as all the fixing mechanisms, the ceiling systems, etc. This structure that you see here is a cladding system that has been tested as per the NFPA 285 test. The Middle East. Uh, is quite an attractive market for the construction industry and, and hence it is very common that uh, the region comes up with innovative projects which require new and innovative materials that needs to come in and these materials need to comply to the local norms set in by UAE civil defense or the civil defense authorities in the region uh, and hence a lot of our customers are outside of the MENA region so Companies based out of Sweden, Germany, Japan, uh, Hong Kong. Uh, these are some of the people who are manufacturing products and they are selling into the Middle East region. And hence, as part of our testing and certification services, uh, we go out to the factories to ensure that the production control is in place and they send samples which we have witnessed as manufacturing process and they are tested here. We have added a lot of tests to take into account some of the new requirements coming in uh, around the world, uh, UK, Europe, uh, Middle East, these are countries which have been evolving their mandatory requirements and, and hence uh, we are now uh, targeting some of the international markets. So this is another large scale fire propagation test uh, from the UK called the BS8414. There is part one and part two. Uh, part one is done uh, where we have a concrete substrate wall. Part two is done uh, where the concrete substrate wall is not there, but just a steel structure. Uh, this, is, this is the mandatory test in the United Kingdom. Uh, it is also one of the tests, or one of the four tests, which the UAE Fire and Life Safety Code points towards to. So in the UAE, uh, subcontractors and the industry have an option. They can either test to the American NFPA 285 test or the BS 8414 or there are two other test methods as options. Uh, here in this test method the subcontractor will come and build a mock-up of their assembly on the test rig. Once the installation is finished we do our thermocouples and instrumentation and this test works using a wood crib. So there is a wood crib which is set to fire uh, and that wood crib creates a fire load uh, and represents a scenario that there is a fire inside a building that is breaking out of a window and that fire load is what is attacking the cladding system. So very common that we have projects where there are multiple test methods referenced. So you have a British standard, you have an EN or a European standard, you have an NFPA, you have a UL standards. We have worked hard to uh, set up a facility that can test as per all the standards. So we are quite a, quite a resource for let's say manufacturers even in Europe who are uh, designing products 
and want them tested for North America. And, and our lab can, uh, can offer those tests here in our facility. Fire safety has a very integral part which is called passive fire protection. And passive fire protection in concept does three things. It does compartmentalization. So in case there is a fire breaking out in a building or in a room, it ensures that the fire remains within that compartment. Second, it ensures that the fire does not start. So if there is a fire starting, let's say, on a carpet, the fire should not propagate or should not catch fire, etc. And the third aspect of passive fire protection is structural protection, which means that if you have, let's say, beams and columns, uh, they are usually have intumescent coatings and paints on it so that if they are facing a fire scenario, the structural strength of the building should not come down. So an important part of this is what is commonly known as fire resistance. In order to create a compartment, you will have fire rated walls, fire rated doors, fire rated partition systems, as well as fire rated through penetrations. So if you have a wall system and you break the wall so that you have pipes, HVAC going in, then the hole needs to be sealed back so that the fire resistance rating of the wall is maintained. So all these things need to be validated. And the way to validate is through using this fire resistance test method or a furnace. What this furnace does, we've got, we've got 12 burners. It creates an environment of a fully developed fire inside a room. So which means it will, it will have temperatures which can go up to let's say 1000 degrees Celsius. And it will also have either a positive or a negative pressure built up inside. So what we do is we have manufacturers of materials like doors or fire rated glazing systems or uh, gypsum or magnesium oxide board based wall systems, shaft walls. They will build a wall and the wall is then moved to close the face of the furnace. Once it closes and locks off, the fire is started and it simulates the environment that the wall or a door or any element is able to contain the fire within itself. And that's what is tested using these furnaces. And uh, there are several parameters related to pass or fail. The fire should not leak off, etc, uh, etc. Et but yeah. So this is uh, our reaction to fire lab. We have augmented. We used to earlier only run the ASTM E84, which is the American test method of the standard tunnel. But now we have added the complete Euro classes classification related tests. So uh, these are mandated, not only in the UAE fire and life safety code, but these are important classification done for cladding material, flooring material, and any interior finishing material. The test method uh, for classification is well known as the EN 13501-1 or the Euro classes and it arrives at classification of material done for reaction to fire. It, it uses a bunch of data from a bunch of equipment. Uh, so you have uh, a calorimeter, you have a sing single ignition test, you have a single burning item test. So typically ignitability, combustibility, flame spread, behavior of material in terms of droplets, etc. All of this behavior is sensed, recorded, and then the Euro classes or the EN13501-1 
uh, arrives at classification of material. So the Fire Life Safety Code would say uh, any high-rise building can have cladding material which can be A1 or A2, S1, D0. And it would allow for a low-rise, let's say, class B, S1, D0, which means the, ignite, the combustibility can be brought down, it can be partially combustible or something, but smoke and droplets, no, no. So these are, these are how materials are classified and the code uses these classifications to define materials going here and there. Intersect 2019, what do you have planned for the show? We will be showcasing the fact that we have expanded our capacity as well as capabilities. We have a lot of new tests that we are offering now, both at small scale level as well as large scale level. Uh, we became a certification body about two years ago. We have grown. Uh, there are more and more people who are looking at us uh, for offering conformity quickly uh, within the construction industry here. So yes, we're looking forward to meeting a lot of interesting people um, and looking forward to the show.